course, you know. Thank you. I know it's hard for somebody your age to find a job anywhere these days, but Glendarroch. <laughs> Just wish I could have been more helpful, but the shop's not really big enough to carry more than me and Brian. Have you tried Ochtan? Well, one or two people said they'd keep their eyes open, but I think it's hopeless. And uh, is the position all that bad? Financially, I mean. Financially, it's not all that good. But money isn't the only reason. In fact, it isn't the main one. Oh, what is? My mum. I can't stand the way she looks at me all the time. As though I'm to blame for my father's death. Oh. Oh, Sheila, I'm sure she doesn't really think that. She does, Mrs. Blair. I can see it in her eyes. I just wish I could go away somewhere. But I can't now. I should never have come back. Oh, it was only the first practice, for you must say. Ah. Listen, listen here. Like a smooth, well-oiled machine. That's how I want to see that team playing. Listen, the only time you're going to see any of them well-oils outside the Octan on a Saturday night. Hi, <laughs> <Hey, Sheila. laughs> Practice go well. Did Dad not tell you? Uh, well, he hasn't really had the time. To... Oh, it went with all the precision and accuracy of a three quid watch. Oh, pathetic, is it? Well, there's no other one for it. Pathetic! Listen, Archie, you said yourself that we're the makings of a very good team. Aye, the makings, no more than that. Well, just give us a bit of time. I haven't got time, Jimmy. I'll never get that lot licked into shape before the match. Oh, come on now, Archie, a manager of your calibre. Oh, it's uh, a I can't be expected to work miserable. Miracles. What we need is an injection of speed, aggressiveness, the, the killer instinct. In other words, experienced shinty players who don't spend half their time cheeking their manager and calling him a wee nyaf. Hey, uh, was and where do you think you're going to get these players? <laughs> oh, darn. Me and Brian will go down and have a look around there. Where is Brian? He's through the back. But listen, I wouldn't disturb him just now, Archie. This is a crisis, is it? Oh, here, Sheila, I meant to tell you, Eddie says you should look into the aqua sports and have a web soon. Oh, should I? Well, my mum's given me a bad enough time as it is without me giving her reasons. Oh, I see. Like that, is it? Yes. And if Eddie's feeling lonely, I'm sure you can get someone else to go and visit him. Oh, no, it's... Uh, uh, that's too far. That's nothing like that. Uh, he's got word of a job in Octa. Has he? Aye, he thought you might be interested. You'd suit yourself whether you want to speak to him or not. Oh, I'll think about it then. Thanks. That's it now. Thanks, Mrs. Thanks, Blair. Bye bye. I'll get the door for you, Sheila. Okay. There we are. Thanks, Steve. See you soon. What's wrong? Oh, it's just Archie barging in like that. He's picked a bad time. Oh. Well, we had a chat with Mr. Carradine, and uh, he says there are no grounds for an appeal. My dear Mrs. Lachlan is a wonderful old lady. Such firmness and strength of character. Of course, it was a very short chat we had. Enjoyable, but one that made me want to know so much more about her. Still, it wouldn't have done to probe more deeply at our first meeting. Uh, probe? For what? For what life was like in the old days. Oh. She must be a treasure house of amusing right. anecdotes. Not just amusing, of course. I suppose there are tales of... Great hardship and sorrow, too. Lily, she didn't exactly arrive in Glendarroch over land by covered wagon. Oh, now you're laughing at me, my dear. But you know, when she was born, life must have been so different in a remote place like this. You said you met someone else? Oh, yes. That fine young shepherd on the hill. Doesn't sound like anyone I know. Oh, a fine looking man he was. Clear, steady eyes. Very taciturn. Not much to say, but you could see not a man to be trifled with, a real Highlander. I can't think of anyone that fits that description. His name sounded more like a like a place than a proper name. In Madonna. That's it. <laughs> Did I say something amusing, my no, dear? No, no, Lily, I'm sorry. It's just I'd never have guessed in Vadara from the way you described it. Oh, hello. <laughs> We've got a casual oh, oh, what's the matter with us? What's the matter with me? As if it wasn't bad enough running up oh. and down a shinty pitch for two hours, I'd go and get hit in the shin. Oh, You'd never a dare to hit me. They won't have enjoyed the practice, then. Well, if that's just the practice, they can keep the game. I don't even think I'd last out a real match. Well, I could. And as if it wasn't bad enough, I'd that wee nyaf Mussolini Mingus shouting at me half the time. Oh, now, let's have a bit of respect, Bob. I mean, Mr Mingus is the manager. Ah. Even if he'll not let me play. Oh? 
I'd be as good as any of that lot. And I sight better than most of them. Well, did you tell Archie that then? I did. And what did he say? The wee naff said I could be the cheerleader. <laughs> Can you imagine it? Me? <laughs> Never in a million years. <laughs> Don't know about that. I've got very good legs. Now you're right, Morag. I think you look great. Morag and our majorettes. Come on, give us a display of baton swelling. Don't you dare. <laughs> and why shouldn't Morag play shinty? I mean, women are doing men's jobs everywhere now, and doing a lot of them better. Well, they certainly look better in wee short skirts. Bob Taylor! Oh. Well, I'm sorry that you've had a wasted day, Morag. Oh, I wouldn't say it was wasted. I mean, not entirely. Do go propose to me. He did, did what? He proposed to me. And of his own free will. Tea, anyone? Oh, what a good idea. Good. Good. George, are we allowed to ask if the Blairs will be going ahead with their appeal? Well, uh, I don't think it would be a breach of professional confidence to tell you that much. No, there are no grounds for an appeal. You're quite sure about oh, that? I'm afraid so. I've had to tell them. Perhaps they should get a second opinion. Fiona, I hardly think that was called for. No, no it's a perfectly reasonable suggestion. Well, that's as maybe, but I don't think Fiona had any right to make it. If Brian Blair wants a second opinion, I'll be very happy to put him in touch with a, a lawyer who is more experienced in criminal law. It is a very specialised field. Do you think that might help? To be perfectly frank, no. But is it so important to him? Can't do any harm. Frank, but hardly encouraging. Of course, there's always the royal prerogative of mercy. Well, why don't they go for that, then? <laughs> Fiona, it's not something you just write away for and enclose a stamped addressed envelope. It has to be recommended by the Secretary of State. And I wouldn't hold out any hopes of it being granted. Jimmy, just why are we playing shinty? Because it's fun. Oh, I knew there had to be a reason. <laughs> well, I don't know about you, but I quite enjoyed it, personally. Well, I hate to admit it, but... I did too. Actually, I wouldn't mind playing it a wee bit more often. Hi. Hey, yeah. Hi. Just in the nick of time, I'm on my way. Have a seat. Would you mind waiting? Not at all, why? Well, if Mum does happen to find out I've been here, it would be better if I could say in all honesty you were here too. Oh, you mean you went alone with me? That's what I mean. What does she think I am? Eddie, you know what she thinks you are. Yeah, I'm sorry. Forget it, Sheila. Jimmy told me you'd heard about a job in Octane. Oh, well, it's, it's nothing great. You might not be interested. If it's legal, I'm interested. Well, one of the guys I used to work beside said that there's a job going as a waitress at the Octan Arms. It's nothing great, but, well, uh, it is something. Oh, I'd be glad of anything that brought me in some money and, and got me out the house. Well, I don't know what the money's like, but oh, I suppose there's bound to be tips. Well, I'll find out all that for myself. I'll go into Octan tomorrow. Good. Right, then. If that's that, I'll get you back down the road, Sheila. Thank you. Bye-bye. See you later on, Eddie. Your tea's about ready, Brian. OK, I'll be through in a minute. You know, you mustn't take it so hard. What makes you think I'm taking it hard? Oh, Brian, take a look in the mirror. Well, Isabel, to tell you the truth, um, I'm more relieved than anything else. Why? Because I was afraid of what the publicity might ah, do to you. Wait, there wouldn't have been that much. Yes, there would. You know it. The papers would have had a field day. I mean, you know those little human interest stories that we like to read about other folk? No, I think taking the long view, this is the best way. Well, I'll just hold to my own opinion on that one. Mm. But if you think it's all for the best, why are you so depressed? Because I have certain forebodings about matters. A sense of impending doom, maybe death. Brian, tell me. Hmm? Oh, I'm thinking about Glendark's finest going out and facing the Chinty League Select. I thought it was something serious. Come on, <laughs> now, your tea's ready. Now! I'll just dump these here for the time being. Oh, I'll move them somewhere else tomorrow. Uh, put them down there, Minister. There's plenty of room. Oh. 
What is all this? Ah, Fiona, it's uh, just a little research I'm engaged upon, um, doing an article for for the Scottish Life magazine, Glen Darroch, Ancient and Modern. Uh, doubtless your mother would mention it. No, she hasn't. Ah, uh, well, it all arose from the article I wrote for the Church and Nation Weekly. Uh, perhaps you've read it. No, Mr. McPherson, I'm afraid I haven't. Oh, it's quite good. Oh, well, then, uh, I could let you have a copy. Uh, some of the points I make are quite perceptive, or... Uh, ah, some. Uh, so I'm told by those who have read it, although it's not for me to say one way or the other. Yes, well, I'm sure it's fascinating, Mr McPherson, but what's that got to do with all this? Uh, well, your mother was good enough to say that I could use this office to study these old documents. Did she now? <laughs> She uh, wasn't too happy about them leaving the premises, not to mention Mrs. Mack's feelings about having them at the manse. So, uh, is there anything wrong, Fiona? <laughs> what could possibly be wrong? Well, I, I just wondered if you might find my presence uh, inconvenient. Mr. McPherson, if my mum says you may use this office, why then you must, and I won't find it in the least bit inconvenient. Oh, good. Because I will use hers. Oh dear, she doesn't seem very pleased, does she? There's no much pleases her these days. Oh, <laughs> I'll go over these with a the hoover first thing in the morning. <laughs> the end justifies the means. Mm -hmm. That's what I say. So did Hitler. Don't be daft. If Douglas proposed to Mora, I could only go to show that we were right all along. He just needed the right kind of push. That wasn't a push, it was a shove. You know, I wonder if it was a thought of Morag in a wee short skirt that sent the blood coursing through his veins. Eh? He sounds a most interesting man, I must say. I'm really looking forward to meeting him. And I wouldn't go expecting too much, Illy. Oh, I know what to expect, my dear. That sort of attractive rogue always appeals to women. That nice young Thomas Kerr was telling me about him. It seems that all the women hereabouts are after him. Well, attractive rogue is certainly half true, Lily. Rogue, yes. The only thing I've ever seen Dougal attract are flies. Oh, men can never see what the attraction is in other men. Mind you, for my own part, I prefer the strong, steady type of man. Like my Matthew. Or that nice young Thomas Kerr. Uh, Lily, who's this nice young Thomas Kerr you keep talking about? Inverdarach. Inverdarach? Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm dancing with tears in my eyes. For the girl in my arms isn't you. Dancing with tears in my eyes. The one that I love. <laughs> but what's all this? Mrs. Cunningham who told you. The minister is writing an article for some magazine. Oh. And she's told him that he can use your office. Oh, uh, yes, yeah, she did mention it, but well, she didn't say he'd be using it as a rubbish tip. Lorna, this is not a rubbish. Well, what is it then? Well, in the words of the minister, this is our national heritage. Lorna, have we had a reply? What's this? It's a load of rubbish from the attic. He told the minister he could look through the old papers for his article. I didn't realise there'd be quite so many. Oh, there's a lot more to come, hundreds and hundreds. But, Mrs Cunningham, I can't possibly work in this chaos. No, of course not. It would rather interfere, wouldn't it? And there are a number of things doing that already. Such as? Well, uh, the only one that's important, Fiona. What has she done now? She's instructed me to change the way we send out our rents notices, to save a few pennies on postage stamps. Her sense of economy is admirable, but sometimes she does take it a little far. Oh, I thought the instructions came from you, otherwise I wouldn't have gone ahead. I see. Well, in future, Lorna, if there are changes to be made, I'll tell you what they are, in person. There's a storm brewing, I've got to check the roof. Archie, hmm? not until you've moved all this. Look, I can't move it till I get the rest of the stuff done and the minister sorted through. Archie! <laughs> She's uh, gone across to Ochtown, job hunting. She didn't uh, drop in here last night, by any chance, did she? Last night, no. So she's uh, heard about something in Ochtown? Uh, something's the right word. 
They need a waitress at the Octarn Arms. Oh, come on now, Irene. These days, a job's a job. You should be glad she heard about it before it was taken. That's who she might have heard it from that bothers me. She slipped out last night, and when she came back, she wouldn't tell me where she'd been. Oh, she's hardly a child anymore, Irene. I think she went to see Eddie Ramsay. Well, why shouldn't she? You know, he's not at all bad, given half a chance, and he hasn't had much of a chance in life, you know. Brian thinks there's a lot of good in him. If you and Brian had been through what we've been through, you might feel very differently about him. Dan always said that boy would be the death of... Oh, Irene, I can understand your feelings, but I don't think a that... A waitress. He... After all, we've planned for her. After all, she'd planned for herself. Well, that's the best future she can hope for now. And she can't complain, because she brought it on herself. Fiona, all I'm saying is that you mustn't make changes without consulting me. But I haven't. At least nothing that's important. It may not be important to you, or for that matter, important in itself, but there are consequences to be considered. Such as? Well, you've quite clearly upset Lorna. Again? Well, all I can say, Mum, is that Lorna is very easily upset. Look, I'm not saying that you shouldn't have opinions on the way things are run, but really, darling... Excuse me, uh, Mrs Shaw's here to see you. Oh, well, uh, show her in, Lorna. If you'd like to go through. Thanks. Mrs Cunningham, hello. How do you do? Oh, I hope I haven't called at a bad time for you. Oh, not at all. May I introduce my daughter, Fiona? Hello. Hello. Well, please, do sit down. Oh, thanks. How are you settling in? Oh, it's all a bit strange still. Yes, I'm sure it must be. Well, the housekeeper said that you'd called while I was out, so I thought I'd pop in and see you, because I was on my way to Glendarroch anyway. On a shopping trip? No, Jimmy Blair's offered to take me for a boat trip on the loch. I'm sure you'll enjoy that. I'm told that Jimmy is an expert guide. <laughs> Good. Well, I just wondered if you'd called about anything in particular. Oh, uh, not really, Mrs Shaw, just a social call. Though the matter of you poaching our staff might have come up, we would like it to stop. Fiona, please. I think we might discuss oh, that look, another time. Uh, listen, I'm sorry, but I don't know anything about the running of the estate. Mr Sneddon, the factor, sees to all that. I only live in the place. You're married to Vincent, aren't you? Oh, you've heard of him. Yes. He's on tour in America at the moment, isn't he? Yes, that's right. You're not touring with him? One hotel after another, not having time to unpack your cases. <laughs> no. I've done it all before anyway. Your husband must miss you on a tour like that. No, oh, no, he's far too busy for that. And even when he isn't, he's got plenty of company. It must be rather lonely for you up at Letterfallach. Well, I haven't really had time to feel lonely yet. I'm actually quite enjoying the peace and quiet. I... It's all right, Lorna. Good morning. I had heard you were in the district. I'm sorry, Elizabeth, I didn't know you had company. Oh, uh, may I introduce you? Good morning, Mrs. Mrs. Shaw. Hello. You've already met? Oh, yes. I called at Letter Fanuc recently on a matter of business. Mr. Watson. Hello, Is Jimmy about? No, no, he's over in the town picking somebody up. Uh, is there anything I can do? No, no, I don't think so. Not unless there's maybe another cup in the pot. Oh, aye, it's just freshly made. So, Owen, uh, how are things going with you and Eddie? Well, pretty quiet at the moment. You know, if you ever want to go back to Shetland, uh, your job will still be open for you. Thanks, but. I think I'll stay in Glendara. I don't know why. There's nothing for me here. Well, you don't have to explain. I understand. I felt the same way once. Yeah, but you left. Maybe I just don't have any ambition. Oh, it wasn't ambition that took me away. No, it was uh, something personal. I proposed to a certain lady, and the lady said no. Mm. <laughs> now, if I can ask you something personal, is it because of young Sheila Lamont that you want to stay? No. 
Well, not exactly. I still feel responsible for her, but... Well, since she gave away the baby, I don't feel much else. Except maybe resentment. I still think about the kid a lot. Where it is. If it's all right. And you'll never see it. Eddie, do you not think maybe you'd be better going back to Shetland for, for a wee while? Well, well, where am I here? A nobody, a son of the village drunk. But this is where I belong. Though, in the end, I suppose I'll have to leave. Well, maybe not. I might just have a wee job for you locally. Well, it's not a very good job, but it's a job just the same. It really is so nice to meet you. You must come and have a meal one evening. Yes, sir. We'll make a date for as soon as you find it. Not exactly our sort, is she? Well, I wonder just how many of our sort wouldn't be her sort. If our ancestors hadn't been crooked lawyers who swindled people out of their land. Oh, Fiona, I protest you're slandering my antecedents. You won't take the odd cattle thief in the early days. My line is entirely made up of honest soap manufacturers and brewers, men of the utmost integrity, who never used a title that wasn't bought and paid for. <sighs> what a fierce little radical you turned out to be. You mustn't bite the hand that feeds you, you know. <sighs> She's really rather nice, isn't she? Andrew, is this just a social call? I'm afraid not. In fact, I'm here as something of a harbinger of doom. Oh, yes. I formed an association with some of the directors of the old estate company to set up a marina on the loch. Really? It doesn't really concern Glendarek, of course, since the project is located on Letter Fallach property, but I thought you might be wondering quite soon what was going on here. That was kind of you was certainly a well-kept secret. Ah, well, my ancestors may not have been clever lawyers, but they certainly knew how to use them to advantage. I'm sorry. A private joke with Fiona. Not that I suppose you'll find anything to amuse you in the situation, Elizabeth. However, you've only yourself to blame. Had you not opposed change with such resolution, then Dara could have profited from the development, which Letter Fallock most certainly will. Thank you.